we're going to do is we're going to find dy dx for this uh, circle graph here. We're going to do it a couple ways. Uh, first, we're going to try out our chain rule. And uh, so if, if I said find dy dx for this, you would have to isolate y and then do the regular chain rule on it. So let's go ahead and do that. So you have y squared squared minus x squared. And so y equals, we have to take uh, the plus and minus square roots, but I only want to deal with the top half of the semicircle, so I'll just say it's going to be positive r squared minus x squared. And then you do the differential operator to both sides. Differentiate with respect to x. This gets symbolized as dy dx. While this, you need to do the, the chain rule. The outer function is the square root function. So it's going to go to 1 over 2 square roots of r squared minus x squared. Multiply that by the derivative of the inside. Uh, since r is a constant, r squared is a constant, so that's going to drop away. The derivative of this is minus 2x. And in total, the answer is minus x over radical r squared minus y squared. And that's all fine and good. This is called explicit differentiation because we had y isolated before we tried to differentiate. Uh, I'm going to do it a different way called implicitly. That's where you do not have y solved for first, either because you can't do it or because it is difficult to do. Sometimes the problems come out a little bit cleaner if you do, if you do it implicitly. So leaving the uh, equation just as it was, I'm going to do the differential operator to all three pieces of this. So, d dx, that. Okay, this, derivative with respect to x of this is 2x, we all know and love. Plus, uh, this is the one that's kind of weird, we haven't seen anything like that before. So, I'll just kind of leave that for now. And the derivative of the constant is zero. What do you do about the derivative with respect to x of y squared? Oh my, got a little side work over here. Um, what happens when you differentiate a composition of functions? You need the chain rule. Let's say that I asked you to differentiate this. There are two functions present here. There's the squaring function, the outside, and the f of x. By the chain rule, this would be 2 f of x, just bring down the 2 via the power rule, and you multiply that by the derivative of the inside, f prime of x. And that's the best that you can do. Similarly, for this thing here, differentiate this. The outer function is 3 something to the fourth, whose derivative is going to be 12 g of x cubed. You can multiply that by the, ins by the derivative of the inside, which is going to be g prime of x. So what we're going to do here is we're going to treat y as though it is a function of x. It's going to work exactly like this thing, just like this. And you see this here, the derivative, there are two functions here. The outer function is the squaring function. The inner function is y. So you differentiate the outer function, we write that as 2y, just doing the power rule. By the chain rule, you multiply Good. that by the derivative of the inside function, which we symbolize as y prime or dy dx, if you so desire. So this is what we have, and we can isolate dy dx. So you divide by 2, and then you bring the x over and divide by y, so you'll have y prime equals minus x over y. All right, so we found y prime to be this which actually does match the thing that we got uh, from doing it explicitly. They just, it's just in terms of y as well. That's what usually happens when you differentiate implicitly. You have y's floating around in there. Uh, I have a couple more examples here. Um, what happens when um, you have combinations of functions that you're trying to differentiate with, you have x's and, and y's. For example, you want to do the product rule here. Differentiate this, ex di differentiate these expre expressions implicitly. What do you do? It requires the product rule because you have a product of functions. So you call the one your f and call the other one g. And uh, the derivative of the product is f prime g. So that's going to be 2x 
y squared plus g prime. For g prime, you need the, the chain rule. So that's going to be 2y y prime. And to complete the product rule, multiply that by x squared. And that's all that there is to it. You could also use it in conjunction with another chain rule. Say that you want to differentiate a, an expression like so, uh, with y on the inside of a function. Uh, you just keep applying the chain rule as normal. So the outermost function is cosine, whose derivative is minus sine x squared to y. And by the chain rule, you multiply that by the derivative of the inside. Or 2x uh, plus the derivative of 2y is 2y prime. That's that. So this is just how to carry them out when you have other op operations involved. I have some actual problems over here uh, that request finding dy and dx and actually isolating it. So I give you a curve that's uh, implicitly defined by this. We're going to assume y is a function of x and find dy and dx. So you, you differentiate each piece. We'll need the product rule here. And that'll be 2x plus the product all right, call one f, call the other g. It'll be uh, f prime g, so that's y, plus g prime, which is y prime, f, x, y prime, plus and this thing, chain rule again, implicitly, bring down to the three, uh, 9y squared takes care of the outside, times y prime, all equaling zero. Once you do that, you'll have a string of uh, terms, some of which will have a y prime in them, some of which will not. Group all the y primes on one side of the e equal sign and take everything else over. So we'll take these to the other side and we'll leave these two. So we'll have x y prime plus 9 y squared y prime equals minus 2 x plus y. After you do that, see a y prime will factor out of here. And what you end up with, when you divide through, you'll get ultimately y prime equals minus over x plus 9y squared. That'll always work that way. You will always be able to isolate y prime no matter how complicated it gets. Maybe as shown in this second example here, okay? Uh, find dy dx and isolate it. Well, differentiate both sides with respect to x. Sine goes to cosine x plus 2y times, by the chain rule, the derivative of the inside, which is 1 plus 2y prime equals, on the other side, 2y y prime. 2y y prime. It looks complicated, but it's really not so bad. Uh, what we have to do is we have to group all the y prime terms and the non y prime terms, which unfortunately means we have to multiply this out, distribute this to that. But it's no big deal, cosine uh, x plus 2y plus 2y prime cosine 2y equals 2y y prime. After doing so, since I'm running out of room, I'll just have to do it in one step. If you bring this to the other side, actually, why don't I just do that? Minus 2 uh, y prime cosine. If you bring that to the other side, the y prime will factor out. And then you can just divide through by what's left over, leaving you with y prime equals all divided by, and when you take it out, you get 2y uh, minus 2 cosine x plus 2y. That's all there is to it.